in this platform was we are going to explore and focus on one very uh, particular sector, travel and transportation, with actually a huge focus on uh, travel. Um, and uh, we're lucky enough to have one uh, of um, the major representative, actually, uh, of bookings with us uh, today. Remember that during uh, um, the uh, other event that uh, IDET um, had uh, and hosted also in Paris, we also uh, had the time to discuss about this major change uh, in travel uh, with the uh, Accor CEO Sébastien Bazin and uh, transportation with uh, Frédéric Mazella from Bablacar. It was at the DigiWatt Future in Paris back in June. Uh, but for now, let's hear uh, from uh, one, again, major um, actor in uh, this particular sector, Booking.com. And we're lucky enough to have Peter Verhoeven with us, is Managing Director, EMEA for Bookings. And he's joining us on stage, jumping. <laughs> there you go. Good morning. Thank you for having uh, me here today. Uh, happy to be in Montpellier. I'm um, just going to click through the first slide of the presentation. Can we go one back? Yeah. So just to uh, talk about Booking.com, uh, first of all, a picture about a big ocean, an ocean of opportunities. You've seen some big numbers already. Priceline Group is the mother company of Booking.com, worth $64, $63 billion. Big company already. But are we at a summit? Are we at a level of plateau already that you could say that we're already reaching our max? No, we're not. It's an ocean of opportunities. And just to give you some indication of that, of every hotel, let's say a 100 room hotel today in Europe, we sell eight rooms per day of that hotel, seven to eight rooms. So there's a huge opportunity in the existing inventory of hotels and properties we work with today, but also in the number of properties. Three years ago, Booking.com had 240,000 properties listed on the website. Today, it's 820,000. We added last year more than 50%. And only 30% of the accommodation types you will find on Booking.com today are hotels. 70% are villas, are apartments, are other types of vacation rental that are in the market too. So the breadth of the inventory and the, how deep you can go into this inventory leads us to believe there is still a huge ocean of opportunities out there. But you know, it's an ocean, right? So I don't know if any divers are in here. It's pretty scary. If you go really deep, you have to be careful because you might get really enchanted with the, with, the, with the bottom of 25 meters and then you might not surface again. So it's also an ocean where there's a lot of things to look out for. So some numbers. Bookings.com worth $64 you know, billion dollar in the Priceline Group, major part of the Priceline Group. A Dutch startup that started in 1996. It was called Bookings.nl. Dutch company, the Dutch travel a lot, so that's how it started. The guy thought, hey, there's an internet. You know, at the time, the dial-up tone of internet was a bit different, uh, or you remember it maybe still. Um, started thinking about the, the potential that this medium, this platform could create. And why? There was potential for consumers, because consumers were starting to look in a different way for information, but at the same time, presenting a different model to hotels and partners that were either completely dependent on other channels, tour operators for example, and wanted to try out new ways also. Today we are now uh, present with 820,000 properties, as I said, we have, I think every day we book 900,000 rooms. So every 24 hours, 900,000 bookings are transacted over our platform. We are present in over 72 countries, and we have a, a team of 10,000 people. People don't think about internet as a, you know, it's like a couple of people working on, on IT. It's 10,000 people that work with Booking.com today. The vast majority of them are sitting in Europe, so it's a European startup, and still the head office is based in Amsterdam. Seven, 700, about 700 here in France, and all over the world. And you see in blue all the places where we have offices. And so, for example, for Africa, you see there's a huge, uh, we only have a couple of offices in Africa. We still, of course, cater for those destinations, but these are the places where we have people working for Booking.com. The IT, the marketing, the core of the business is being run from the Amsterdam office, as it was in 1996. A 20-year-old startup, we call it. Um, if you think of that... If you think of the, the, the big thing that started this company, it was changing consumer trends. Looking for information began to happen in a different way. 
And uh, that's all nice and said, but all the people that started in 1996 with an idea did not survive. So what happened? What was really the things that made us successful? The first thing I think it was real focus. So when you talk about speed, and I saw something about speed and going fast and getting scope, it's also focus. So the focus was from the beginning for Booking.com to really focus on accommodation. Not on travel, not on the collaterals, only on accommodation. Getting a critical mass of suppliers to participate in the platform and ensuring that you have all the resources you need to be techy and technology driven on your platform. And of course, a lot of things have happened since then, right? Since 1996. Nobody ever thought we would grow to the size we would grow today. I mean, even the founder, I talked to him a couple of days ago, he said, you know, we just started something. We thought it was an idea. Nobody anticipated the growth of this business and that we would be the worldwide leader of online travel today. Transparency wins. So reviews, everything that you put in the consumer's eye, everything has to be truthful, has to be measurable. All the information that you put out there is key in your success. If you're not, let's say, conversion driven, if you're not looking at what the consumer wants and approves of every day, you will lose the battle. And I think that was very clear. We have over 60 million reviews now today posted. 85% of the travelers look at those reviews before they book. The first reason why they book a location or an accommodation is price and location, of course. The third one is straightaway peer-to-peer -peer reviews. Not what your family says, not what your brother says, not what your friends say. Peer-to-peer -peer reviews, hugely important. Also, the internet has transformed. Consumers don't want anymore just the transaction. It's not about just simply being a platform that, of course, a platform gives wide variety of choice, gives filters, gives transparency to a market. Better transparency is good for a customer, customers like that. But it's also about the experience. So once I'm in the discovery phase of my uh, trip that I want to plan, what information is being reached out to me? Do you have destination guides? Do you have more content to provide to me? How is your content formatted? These are big things that really, I think, uh, made us focus on, uh, on the technology side of it. And you measure that, right? Because you can say that's great, but how do you harness that technology power? We have thousands of developers in Amsterdam from, I think, 75 nationalities sitting there that are completely focused on data. And there's something cultural about it. So if you talk about the culture of companies I've worked for, I've worked for Disney, I've worked with Sebastian before, I've worked in a lot of businesses, but this culture is different. It's different because the, in, the highest individual paid person's opinion is worth zero. So the website you see today is the result of beta testing, all the time A-B testing. So we will show this part of the room a version of a website that's a little, there's one difference in the version you're going to see, and you're, by the way, 200,000, and you're also 200,000, you're going to see a slight difference. It might be a color, it might be a shade, it might be a word, it might be an underscore. Thousands of experiments are being done. To be precise, 1,000 experiments every day. And this is called incremental progress. It's not sexy, right? I mean, dark blue, light blue, what do you choose? Well, if you choose dark blue, the site goes dark blue. So these small steps in, in experimentation and being data-driven about it and being very scientific about it is what makes a successful website. So it's the website you see today and the mobile app that you see today is the result of customer choices. They preferred this version. They converted better. They stayed longer in our boutique with this version that you see today. And of course, many of followers in the industry benefit from that knowledge and copy a part of our site sometimes, but that's fair. So how do you harness it? It's, I think, very much about culture. Uh, when our CEO joined the company, Darren Houston, he had a thought about the logo. There was a little, I think, a little briefcase hanging under it or something, and he wanted it out. The team said, I'm sorry, we're not going to do it like that. We're going to test that. So, you know, the CEO is being challenged on changing the logo of a firm. I haven't witnessed many of those occasions. Everything is tested. Some trends, I think it's very obvious that mobile first is, uh, is not new. Uh, it's really uh, getting really big now. 86% of global travelers use their smartphone, are likely to use their smartphone. 
Another data that's really interesting is that we see that within the 48 hour window of booking, almost 50% of them book through mobile, mobile devices. So this is like big, right? So if you go to Rio de Janeiro, and you travel to Rio de Janeiro, and you stay there for a couple of days before you go to Buzios, and then you see the weather you're in Buzios, and then you, in the old days, when you would go back to Rio to, 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 because the weather was not so nice in Buzios, you would say, I have to call, I have to, people travel to Rio, they stand in front of the hotel, they stand in front of the Copacabana, they scroll, they look, and they book. This is the way that people start using it more and more to book a room. Today, one third of bookings are coming from a mobile device. That trend is ultra rapidly ramping up, of course, and nobody will be surprised that that will be rapidly more than 50%. It does mean something. To be relevant on the screen of a desktop is a different game than to be relevant on the screen of a mobile device. It has a different technology. You have to be relevant. We have to be relevant on 232 screens every day. 230 type of resolutions that we have to cater for. So you can imagine the tech guys behind that and the technology that's behind that. And that trend will continue. And those who are not relevant on that market will probably have a tough time. And it means for us also, it means launching innovation on apps. We launch Booking Now, which gives you the instant vision of hotels around you that you can book. We still have our mobile website that transacts huge numbers of volume. We have to stay relevant on both of these. Instant bookable. Uh, it was talked a little bit about in the previous intervention. The necessity to be real-time, instant bookable for consumers is key, is our belief. So even if you talk about vacation rental, even if you talk about an apartment you want to rent for a while, if you cannot offer that instant bookable feature, there's something that you're not giving the customer because he wants it. And if you're not going to provide it, then somebody else will. Because the customer wants instant confirmation. No long email exchanges, owners accepting that you... You know, you take their reservation and let's email up and down. It's instant bookable or it's nothing. That's at least our vision of the way forward. By the way, here you see some of the iglos that are also featured on our website. And uh, that's just one type of non-hotel accommodation that we have, which I talked about earlier. So instant bookable, bookable real time is remaining uh, pivotal. Um, the value chain, there was also maybe a discussion in the previous session about what happened to the value chain, what happened to the... Uh, to, to the industry. Well, of course, the big winner in all of this is the customer, right? The consumer. He's got transparent markets. If you used to go to your travel agency with a brochure and paper to find out something, you might have trusted the brand because you're not sure what's going to happen when you travel. All this is out of the market. That's a huge win for travel. That's a huge win for consumers. For hotel and accommodation partners, there's huge wins too. And I think that should be underestimated. It shouldn't be underestimated. When you look at a small size property in the Alp region with 30 rooms, 20 rooms, 10 rooms, with a click, with two clicks, he has visibility in Russia, he has visibility in China, he has worldwide visibility on the web, and he can exist. And he can, he doesn't have to spend marketing efforts that he could never before. Before he can simply exist because he's visible on platforms, not only on ours but on platforms as ours. Of course, there's also friction in that market sometimes. You know, tour operators, for example, those who really owned the whole coastal regions in Spain, Portugal, and still do for a large, large chunk. Hotels began, began looking at what distribution channel is more interesting for me. And that's, of course, where we started at the value because we offered a business proposition that was interesting to them compared to maybe the ones they had before. So. For tour operators, it's been a rough ride. And of course, they're also converting to more online experiences, and every company will have its strategy. But those, of course, were very much affected by this, uh, by this uh, whole chain of events. I think uh, a last note on, uh, on uh, where this is going. Um, as you see, the market keeps on moving. There's an ocean of opportunities, but there's a large number of players that are out there. Airbnb is with us today. Uh, we are also broadening our spectrum. Uh, there's a lot of players out there. There's meta search out there. So it's not like it's a, a safe ride home. We constantly think that the culture of the company is what keeps you, uh, which is what will keep us alive, focusing on technology, technology solutions. For example, if I'm a customer and I'm traveling to a hotel, I want to be in touch with the property 
not via email. I want to have a chat conversation with the property. That technology is something that we're looking to enable, something new. At the same time, for our suppliers, so for our hotel partners and accommodation partners, they're looking for technology solutions. They're looking in this world of constantly changing prices for advices. And who could give them that advice? Who could be a trusted partner to give them advice how to position themselves somewhere? Uh, that's also solutions we're looking into offering, digital solutions for partners, and of course, staying customer focused. But the core of it all is stay very close to the company culture. I think that culture uh, is really about, you know, it's not because you're the boss and you're on stage with a microphone that you're right. It's the data that will show that you're right because millions of customers choose you every day. And once you've got that culture, I think there's a lot of uh, potential out there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Peter.